Hello VC, Vinyl Community. Today I have a lot of records to show, so I try to be quick and not to ramble too much. But a while ago I uh, went through my archive and uh, felt the desire to listen to some records more from the so-called British jazz funk era, um, which uh, was this kind of fascinating sound on the verge of um, uh, jazz fusion and funk music and soul and hip-hop and um, yeah I started to go through my records uh, regarding that area of music and um, in the end I ended up uh, making two two mixes for Mixcloud so uh, if you want to go down the memory lane and be a bit nostalgic about this sound um, you can uh, listen to those mixes I will put uh, the link um, in the description. But before I put back the records uh, on to the shelf, so to speak, I thought I will go through them with you. And because it's quite a lot of uh, albums, uh, I will try not to ramble too much. Now when we say British jazz funk, it is a term used rather loosely, at least by me. Because there's all kind of bands uh, on the fringes of that uh, genre that uh, actually didn't make any kind of music that was specifically funk music or or particularly jazzy um, but they were part of the same era of the same movement of the same scene so um, just uh, don't hold me too accountable uh, to my choices here uh, when I say British jazz funk it's a very it's a very loose terminology and uh, it, it means a lot of bands that were much deeper in the area of, of post-punk or disco or even ska, but still kind of appeared on the same shows and uh, um, were kind of part of the same rather narrow era that didn't last longer than maybe 10 years. So um, to start with this, uh, let's go back to one of the bands that was kind of a precursor to the whole movement. And that would be Gonzalez and their 1975 album Our Only Weapon is Our Music. And uh, this is an album that is featuring uh, probably one of my favorite rock and pop singers of all times, which is uh, the here, of course, you can see that that well, the incredible Lenny Zakatek, who obviously later became the leading uh, singer and vocalist in the Alan Parsons project and uh, who is an astounding singer. Now Gonzalez started out as a mostly instrumental band with a lot of musicians as you can see here um, and they gravitated more and more towards um, well, funk and disco. There are some great tracks here that I can recommend to you for example Nothing Ever Comes That Easy um, or Result or uh, the love you've given me. So if you like, you can check those one out. And that's Gonzalez. Uh, now the other group that uh, started much earlier than all the others was uh, the Real Thing. Um, this is a compilation, um, and uh, this band started already in 1972, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, obviously their music is kind of deeply indebted to the American Motown and soul music um, but uh, funk and disco quickly creeped into their sound. If you like a recommendation from The Real Thing I would say for example a track like She's a Groovy Freak or Can You Feel the Force. This is the 1978's album by High Tension. Excellent record, great great mixture of, of kind of a slow disco, very measured funk and uh, wonderful sort of late 70s soul. Quite impressive musically. Yeah, my recommendation to dip your toe into this music would be a track called Autumn Love or British Hustle or If It Moves You. Another band uh, from the early days of British jazz funk is uh, Heatwave and this is their 1979 album Hot Property. Now there's some astounding musicianship on this album. Um, this band was really a funk monster. You can't sit still to this music, that's just impossible. Just check out how locked in the bass and the drums are. 
That's uh, Derek Bramble on the bass guitar. And he was the new guy in the band because uh, Mario Mantese, who was the original bass player for uh, uh, Heatwave, uh, he, he was stabbed by his girlfriend. So this is a band with all kind of wild biographical milestones. Um, if I could recommend a track to check them out, it would be certainly uh, the first the first track called Razzle Dazzle with this amazing tripping bass. Another great example is Raise a Blaze and uh, yeah, the message is in the groove. Uh, what a great funk band. Or check out a song called One Night Ten, starting the B-side. Um, with some really vicious bass playing there, amazing stuff. The next band I want to talk about is Atmosphere. And uh, Atmosphere is uh, just uh, an incredible band that was so far ahead of their time. It's totally ridiculous. Now I have only this best of CD here uh, with their music. And uh, they're actually pretty expensive to get uh, on vinyl still. Even second hand uh, you have to put some serious coin on the table. Even if you're only going after the 12 inches. Um, but I have actually one track uh, by Atmosphere on vinyl and that's on this uh, compilation by Dimitri from Paris, quite famous actually, called A Night at the Playboy Mansion. And here uh, Dimitri chose uh, the track Motivation, um, which is uh, another pretty cool track. Uh, obviously their most famous track is probably Dancing in Outer Space and uh, if you are interested in their music this is the one to check out. Um, quite quite pioneering sound in the late 70s already, but already sounding like some some uh, house band from the mid 90s. Yeah, now uh, we can start to dig deeper into sort of the proper uh, British jazz funk bands, and obviously one of them would be the incredible Loose Ends. Now this is a kind of a mixture of 80s synth pop and uh, urban R&B, very cool keyboard solos actually and uh, all kind of quite uh, seminal 909 uh, percussion effects that has been sampled to death by dozens and dozens of hip-hop artists of later decades. Um, so, um, so Where Are You is uh, their album from 1985. Um, if you, uh, you want to check it out, and you probably you have heard the one or other track from this album, obviously Hanging on a String uh, is quite famous and you might have heard it. You can check it out. Magic Touch is a pretty cool uh, song. The Sweetest Pain or Silent Talking, which is a song that might actually surprise you. So, uh, Loose Ends. Um, so where are you? Now this is uh, the real Chucky Boo, their album from 1987. So uh, kind of a record at the end, at the end of the British jazz funk era. This is a pretty cool album with some good tracks here on it. Uh, uh, particularly um, there's a song called There Is No Gratitude, which is quite good. And uh, yeah, there's the title track, The Real Chucky Boo, which is actually 11 minutes long. Um, and uh, it's certainly the kind of song where you just can't sit still. Now, I said that when I talk about British jazz funk, I oftentimes am referring to bands that actually didn't do any kind of funk music at all and were just kind of part of this uh, bigger a uh, group of artists that happened to be at a certain place in a certain time. This certainly counts for one band in particular, and that would be Pigback. Now Pigback is a completely insane band, breathtakingly original and very non-conformist. Uh, this is a, a band made of raw energy. Now this is their 1981's breakthrough 12 inch uh, Papa's Got a Brand New Pig Bag, which uh, had this very popular tune. This was followed uh, next year by their first album Dr. Heckle and Mr. Jive that came out in 1982. 
Um, certainly one of my favorite albums from this whole musical environment. This is an incredible record. Um, just check out a track like Orangutango or uh, Doza Don. Um, this is uh, 1983's uh, Land and Ear. Um, certainly less experimental and certainly less gloomy than the previous one, but even more funky, I would say. Um, check out a track like Weak at the Knees, um, Hit the Odak or Jump the Line. Um, now, um, I mean, this band was known to, known to be completely unmanageable and unproducible. I think there was all kind of alcohol and drugs going on. This was a wild bunch. Uh, really a kind of a dangerous band and uh, so uh, obviously uh, their existential clock was always ticking. Um, so now this is the self-titled uh, live album from 1984. Um, I'm not such a big fan of live albums but I must say this one sounds really good. This is an incredible live sound that they had and this is an interesting snapshot, snapshot of this raw energy they had. It's pretty cool. Now an artist that definitely made no jazz funk, but should be mentioned at this point for a, a particular reason. And I'm talking about Joe Jackson. Now, this is uh, obviously very debatable if he belongs to this kind of group of bands at all. It's a very different music, much more in the area of uh, punk rock of sorts. But uh, the early stuff has this funky twang um, that kind of puts it in the same trajectory as, for example, Pigback. Particularly an album like Beat Crazy has uh, this very similar recipe as uh, Pigback. There is this element of ska and rockabilly and certainly a touch of jazz. So I kind of included it here, aware of the fact that it's probably the biggest stretch of the whole list. But it's also interesting how Joe Jackson quickly moved from this rather rugged, albeit elegant, sound of I'm the Man to the more uh, sophisticated Latin pop of Beat Crazy in 1980. I mean, check out a track like Battleground, uh, which is a rather overlooked little composition. And certainly two years later came Night and Day, which already has a lot of uh, sort of a jazz funk aesthetic going on there particularly on a track like Target or Stepping Out or Breaking Us In Two even and um, um, also Graham Maybe on bass. Um, I love Graham Maybe's bass playing. Obviously you have uh, Body and Soul um, with a track like You Can't Get What You Want Till You Know What You Want. Um, the whole rhythm section has a very strong sort of jazz funk vibe to it. Um, so uh, that's why I kind of included it here, despite the fact that Joe Jackson is not a very typical example of British jazz funk. 